If you're a mirrorless camera photographer and you're struggling to figure out how bright or how dark your photos should be, or they just don't look how you want them to look, and you're not using the histogram, or you don't know how to use it, that's what this video is gonna be all about, using the histogram to get better exposures. Metering is kind of a lost art today, using photometry and an exposure offset to make your photo darker or brighter based on a known value of reflected light. Now that's something that hardly anyone does these days because with digital cameras, we have instant feedback. And especially with mirrorless cameras, we can see what our photos are going to look like before we even press the shutter button. But there's kind of a trial and error thing that a lot of photographers do. You take a picture, it looks too bright or too dark. You make some adjustments, take a picture again, play it back, see how that looks. Well, you can get all of that figured out and a lot more accurately before you press the shutter using the histogram. You might have seen that little graph on your camera display, wondering what that is, or maybe you know what it is, but you're not quite sure how to use it. That's the histogram. Nearly all mirrorless cameras have these. Depending on what kind of camera you have, you're going to enable it differently. Some cameras, you have to enable it in your menus, and then it's on your screen all the time. Other cameras, you can flip through different display options to hide it after you're done using it. And no matter how you enable it in your camera, it's important to understand what it is and how it works and how to use it so that you can get better exposures. And the reason that using the histogram is so important, a lot of photographers judge how their exposure is going to look based on how it looks on the screen, like how bright or how dark it is. Well, there's a problem with that because your screen is lying to you. You could have the brightness turned all the way up and the photo is gonna look way too bright or vice versa, have the brightness down and now your picture looks too dark. You can't base your exposure on that. You might also have a glare or if you're in a dark environment, there's so many different things where you cannot judge the brightness of your photo based on how it looks on the screen. You need some kind of truth data, some kind of absolute measurement, and that's the histogram. And as a little side note, it is important to understand that the histogram is based on the JPEG preview of your photo. Even if you're only recording the raw file format, that histogram is going to be based on your image quality or picture control, you know, the other settings that affect the contrast and saturation of your picture. Now, there are some other things that you can do uh, for different cameras to see more of a raw type histogram. I'm not gonna go into that here. You can read more about that in an article that I wrote about that linked in the description, but that's important to understand. The histogram is based on your JPEG settings even if you're not recording the JPEG. So what is the histogram? Well, like I said, it's the truth data for your exposure. It is a graphical representation of the brightness of every single pixel in your frame. That's exactly what it is. On the left side of the X axis, you have a luminosity value of zero or pure black. And then on the right side, you have a luminosity value of 255 or pure white. And then you have 254 tones in between from black to white. And then on the Y axis, that's just a measurement of how many pixels for that luminosity value are in that photo, proportionally speaking, to all of the other luminosity values. So if you have a histogram with a very tall peak on the left side, and then a small little bump somewhere on the right side, that means that the majority of the pixels in your frame are black or close to it, and only a few pixels are bright because of that small bump. Now that you kind of understand what exactly the histogram is graphing out, how do you use it? Well, there's a really simple way that I look at the histogram, and that's to just divide it into thirds. Technically speaking, that's not entirely accurate, but when you're looking at that little tiny graph on the screen, trying to judge your exposure, it's just easy to divide it into three zones. The left third is going to be your shadows, your darker tones, like night scenes, black walls, black cats, other deep shadows. 
that's where they're going to fall in that left third of the histogram. And then on the right side, those are your highlights, your brighter tones, things like white clouds, snow, white sandy beaches, bright reflective concrete. And then the middle third, those are your mid-tones, like your blue skies, your blue water, cityscapes, grass, vegetation, other kinds of landscapes. So if you can just kind of remember where those kinds of objects should be in the histogram, that's exactly how we're going to use it. We're going to adjust our exposure, whether you're in manual exposure or using exposure compensation, to place known objects where they belong in the histogram. Now let's look at an example to see how we do that. This scene is one of my favorites for demonstrating how to use the histogram. It's a scene mostly made of midtones. We have a blue sky, a blue lake, some blue mountains. There's a little area of shadow trees over on the left side, and then some snow in the mountains. Now we can correlate those areas to the histogram. Since most of the picture is made up of midtones, most of the histogram is in that middle third. That represents the sky, the lake, and the mountains. There's this little tiny bump over on the left side of the histogram, the shadows. And that's exactly where those trees are. Those trees that are in the shadows, those are a small area of the picture, so they're a very small bump in the histogram on the left side. There is some snow on the mountains. Again, it's a very small area of the picture that's represented by the very small bump on the right side of the histogram. Now, if I reduce my exposure, make it darker, those midtones, the sky, the water, and the mountains, those are going to move to the left side of the histogram into the shadow area. They're going to be much darker. The snow is going to come into the midtone area of the histogram, and you can see that snow now looks gray instead of white. If I increase my exposure, I overexpose it, all of those midtones are now going to be compressed over to the right side of the histogram. Those trees, the shadow areas, will become brighter, they'll become midtones, but the rest of the scene is really bright and washed out. So I'm just going to bring everything back, I'm going to adjust my exposure until I have a little bump on the left side in the shadows for those trees, a little bump on the right side for the snow and the mountains, and everything else hopefully should fall in the middle. That last example was with a Fujifilm camera. Now let's look at a Nikon Z camera. Here we have two prominent bumps in the histogram. The right side, which is kind of in between the middle third and the right third, that represents all those bright clouds in the sky. And then that other bump on the left side represents the building and all the shadows in front of the building. If I increase the exposure, those clouds, that tonal range of all the clouds, they're going to get compressed over on the right side and eventually become completely clipped and washed out. The shadow areas move into the midtones, so we can see all the detail in the shadow areas, but we've lost all the detail in the clouds. I bring the exposure back down, the tonal range for the clouds, they start to expand in the midtones. We have a lot of good detail and texture in the clouds now, but the shadows have become compressed on the left side, so we can no longer see the details in the shadows. So knowing that I want texture in those bright white clouds, knowing that those are going to be somewhere close to the right third of the histogram, I'm going to adjust my exposure until that hump on the right side that I know represents the clouds goes into that right third. And that also gives me good shadow and foreground detail. Now what about high contrast scenes? You're likely going to see the high contrast scene where you have a very tall peak on the left side and a very tall peak on the right side with really nothing in between. That's a lot of contrast. How are you going to expose a single frame in that situation? What I prefer to do is have deeper shadows. So I'm going to decrease my exposure until those brightest areas of the picture, which is actually wood, and wood is a mid-tone. So I'm going to decrease my exposure until the brightest part of that histogram, which I know is the wood because that's the brightest thing in the picture, is now in the middle 
third of the histogram. That's going to put my shadows even closer to pure black. A lot of it very deep pure black, which is fine with me. I like my shadows like that. And it gives me good texture and detail in that wood, which, like I said, are the midtones. So that's a basic introduction to using the histogram. Know what those three zones are and what kind of objects normally fall within each one of those three zones. And then you just adjust your exposure until those objects are placed in the appropriate area of the histogram. If you're having a difficult time figuring out what corresponds to what on the graph, you can always, for example, point your camera or zoom in so that a known value fills up the entire frame, like the sky, and then adjust your exposure until that sky, a midtone, is in the middle of the histogram and locking your exposure in either manual exposure mode or using automatic exposure lock, then you can reframe and recompose your picture. The use of it is pretty similar from one camera to another, no matter what brand you have. So check your manual for how to pull up and display your histogram. If you're a Fujifilm X or GFX user or a Nikon Z system user, I have courses dedicated to using the histogram, configuring your displays and using all of the different exposure modes with the histogram to get those exposures correct in the camera. And you can check those out at peltierphotocourses.com. I'll have that linked in the description with a coupon code for you. If you have any other questions or comments about the histogram, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more great tips like this every week, and we'll see you in the next video.